Hello friends, this video on Structural Organization of Animals Part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Look at the different types of animal tissues. Now broadly there are four types of animal tissues. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, nervous tissue and muscular tissue. So these are the four major types of tissue present inside the body of any animal. So we will talk about each of these tissue types in detail and we will see if they have further subtypes as well. Right? So we will start our discussion with epithelial tissue. So what are epithelial tissues? Now the name must be telling something. So what is the meaning of epithelial? Epi means above. And therial means grow. So something which grows above that is known as epithelial. Right? So a rough idea that it, it has to be something which is on the outer side or which is, a, which is above something. So basically epithelial tissues are the protective tissues and they are generally above all other tissues. We will have a better understanding of this as we see this in more detail. They basically act as covering. They try to cover other organs or they try to cover cavities. So they act as protective tissues. Covering of external surfaces, organs and cavities in body. So when I say covering, it not only means that it has to cover the outermost surface of our body. It can even act as a covering for the internal organs. There are so many organs present in our body. Heart, lungs, kidney. So all those are organs also need to be protected. Right? So even for internal coverings or there are some open cavities inside the body as a covering to those cavities. So all those places we see epithelial tissue. So the basic function of epithelial tissue is that they provide protection. They act as boundaries keeping different body systems separate. As I said, now even inside the body they can act as covering of different different organs. So they are basically keeping different things separate so that they do not get mixed up with each other. Now what are they made up of? They are nothing but closely packed cells forming a continuous sheet. So closely packed cells, you, you really do not find a lot of intercellular space or a lot of intercellular material in case of epithelial tissue. Why is it so? Why are they so closely packed? So that is a question that might arise in your mind. So now if they want to act as a covering to something, why do they need to be closely packed? Now if they are not closely packed, so if there are leakage between two cells in the epithelial tissue, what will happen? That means the boundary will be leaky. It is something like this. Suppose you have built a house. Why do we put boundary around our house? For safety, right? So that nobody can just enter into our house. So we give a boundary to the house. Now what will happen if your boundary is leaky? Let us suppose this is your house, okay? And you have given a boundary like this. So this is perfectly fine. This is a boundary and this is a gate which is locked. Now what will happen if you have a leaky boundary like this? So the boundary is suddenly open here. Then there is no point of giving this boundary, right? Because anybody can enter from here because this is always open to anybody. So if you are giving a boundary to anything for protection, then that boundary has to be strong enough. There should not be any leakage in that boundary. So now here, the boundary is the epithelial tissue and the epithelial tissue are made up of cells. So there should be no gap between the cells so that there is no leakage. If there is leakage, what will happen? Now, who are enemies here? Who can enter? Like for example, here maybe thieves can enter into your house if you have a leaky boundary. In this case, what will happen if you have leaky boundary inside your body? There can be many harmful fluids or harmful materials, toxic materials present inside the body which might enter into some other organ. Right? For example, as I said, there is an excretory system whose job is to collect all the waste materials of the body and throw them out of the body. Now, what will happen if you have a boundary to the heart which is leaky? So, anything can enter inside the heart. So, now these excretory, th these uh, uh, waste products are also present inside the body. What will happen? They will start entering into the heart. 
so that will damage the heart right so that is why in order to prevent any kind of leakage the epithelial tissues are closely packed cells with very less intercellular space or very less intercellular material now no blood vessels are present within these tissues so they are non vascular tissues so when i say there are no blood vessels how do we know that there are no blood vessels or why do they don't have the blood vessels okay now first let us see why they do not have blood vessels what i mean what is the purpose of blood vessels when i say they have blood vessels means blood will be flowing through these tissues now what is the purpose of blood basically the purpose of blood is to transport nutrients water to different parts of the body so do i mean to say that epithelial tissues do not need these nutrients they do not need water nutrients etc they need all of them but they do not need blood vessels so how do they get these nutrients all those things nutrients and water they come through diffusion by diffusion through their walls they can exchange nutrients and water so they do not need blood vessels that is one thing secondly how do we know that do, they do not need blood vessels have you ever observed just a very small example now uh, look at your hand what happens if you hit something like if you hit the wall little hard or if you press your hand little hard does it start bleeding no right why because the uppermost layer of our skin is basically nothing but epithelial tissue and those epithelial tissues do not have blood vessels so even if you when you press it hard i mean blood doesn't come out because there is no blood when does it start bleeding only when something pinches inside when something goes deep inside not on your skin surface but when it goes or pierces deep inside it so then it is basically going lot below the epithelial tissue and it is hurting some other tissue layer where blood vessels are present and that is why it starts bleeding so that's how we know that epithelial tissues do not have blood vessels so that is another important point to remember now let us look at the structure of epithelial tissue so anyways in the previous slide i already told that they have less intercellular space that is something important when we talk about the structure of epithelial tissue as i said there is no or very very less intercellular spaces the reason is quite clear now right so if you see very roughly this is how it look like so this this is your epithelial tissue these are the cells which form the epithelial tissue if you see the intercellular spaces are minimal or no intercellular spaces so on one end you will have the basement membrane which separates the epithelial tissue from the low below layer connective tissue so just below the epithelial tissue you have the connective tissue and connective tissue in fact blood is a type of connective tissue so obviously connective tissues have blood vessels connected to it so when something pierces inside your body and it reaches beyond the basement membrane it starts bleeding right so this is how the structure of epithelial tissues are so one surface is free while the other surface is basal surface that is attached to the basement membrane so this surface of epithelial tissue is the basal surface and the other surface is the free surface the extracellular fibrous basement membrane separates epithelium from the underlying tissue so basically this is the basement membrane whose job is to separate the epithelial tissue from the connective tissue which is located below it now the question is where do we find epithelial tissues as i said epithelial tissues are present inside the animal body now most of the time i'll be taking examples of human beings because that is because human beings we can interpret them more easily because we can relate them to ourselves right now that doesn't mean that these tissues are present only inside the human body it is present inside all other animals as well but again the internal structure of different animals are going to be quite different but at least the structure and function of the tissues will remain the same in all the animals so when i say where do we find epithelial tissues i'll talk about the human body where inside a human body you can see epithelial tissues so some of the places where you see them is lining of the mouth so inside our mouth there is a very thin lining 
for the protection of the oral cavity. So that lining you will see epithelial tissue. You can also find them on the skin. As I said just now, entire body skin is covered by epithelial tissue for protection. Lung alveoli. So inside the lung you have the alveoli which actually helps in absorbing oxygen. So there also you have epithelial tissue. Lining of blood vessels. So even on the lining of blood vessels, you have epithelial tissue. As I said, epithelial tissues are basically seen as covering of organs or as covering of cavities. So everywhere you will see it as the outermost covering. They are also found in the kidney tubules. So these are some of the places where you commonly see epithelial tissues. Now let us talk about their functions. What job do they perform? Now, the basic function is protection, as I said before also, because they are going to, they are acting as boundary. So, their main job is to protect the underlying tissues or organs. It also regulates the exchange of materials between the body and external environment and also between different parts of the body. Now, it, it is something very common, right? When I was giving you the example of the boundary of your house. So, when you build a house, and you give a boundary to it, you also provide a gate which can be either opened or locked, right? So basically your boundary will decide which people to allow inside your house and which people not to allow, correct? So here also the epithelial tissue, it is a boundary definitely. So it protects the internal uh, tissues or organs. But at the same time, it has to allow materials which are required for the tissues and organs. For example, the nutrients, the water, all those things come by diffusion and they are allowed inside. So it basically acts as a regulator. It allows the exchange of materials between the body and the external environment. Whichever is needed is allowed, whichever is not needed is not allowed. So it regulates that exchange of materials. It also helps in absorbing food and nutrients. So absorption is another important function of epithelial tissue. Just now I was telling in the previous slide, right, that epithelial tissues are present inside the lung alveoli. So even inside, inside the lung, the main purpose is absorption of oxygen, right? So these tissues help in absorbing food as well as absorbing. So absorption is another important function performed by epithelial tissues. And since it has this property of absorbing food and nutrients, that is why they can do without blood vessels. So even if blood vessels are not supplying them with the nutrients and food, they can get it by diffusion. They can get it by absorption. Right? So as I said, when I was talking about uh, the lung whose purpose is to absorb oxygen, that is why the lining is by epithelium. It also absorbs food. So food, for example, the small intestine in our body. The main purpose of small intestine is the absorption of nutrients from the digested food. So there also we have epithelium lining. So that epithelial lining of the small intestine will help in absorbing the food material. Secretes chemicals like hormones, saliva, enzymes, etc. So this is again yet another important function of epithelial tissue. They are also capable of secreting chemicals, for example, hormones, saliva, enzymes. Look at the salivary gland. They secrete saliva and saliva plays such an important role in the process of digestion. When you talk about hormones, they play many roles inside our body, right? In fact, we have spoken about hormones in your class 9th, we have videos on hormones in the endocrine system. So here also we will talk about hormones but not in too much of detail. So this is again yet another very very important function of the epithelial tissues. So basically you can say that when you talk about the functions of epithelial tissues, there are three major functions which they perform. Protection, absorption and secretion. These are the three major functions performed by the epithelial tissues. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.